Researchers, including Seth Newsom of the Carnegie Institution for Science, have recently gathered information about the origins of early agriculture from an unusual source, dog and pig bones. The basic question we were looking at was the intensification of agriculture in northern China. The bones come from a Neolithic site known as Dadiwan in China's western Lost Plateau. We roughly knew what the chronology was like at Dadiwan because there's two fairly distinct cultural phases. When we first went into this project, uh, we believed or we thought that we'd be able to find human remains from the earliest level. Instead of analyzing humans from the first level, we analyzed pigs, um, bear, um, birds, and also dogs. Interest centers on the plant millet, which is a kind of plant known as a C4 plant that absorbs a heavier form of carbon. Although fossil remains of millet have been found, they don't directly reveal how much millet contributed to the local diet. This is where the dog and pig bones come in. Animals with diets high in C4 plants also tend to concentrate heavier isotopes in their bones. Humans occupied the site during two main phases. Phase 1 lasted from 7,900 to 7,200 years ago. Phase 2 was 6,500 to 4,900 years ago. Most of the dog bones from the Phase 1 deposits bore the isotopic signature of a high millet diet. Because dogs are unlikely to have eaten millet on their own, this suggests that these dogs were domesticated and fed by humans who harvested millet. The pig bones don't show signs of millet in the diet, so they were probably wild. Both dog and pig bones from Phase 2 have the isotopic signature of millet, so they were each probably domesticated by this time. Millet was really the only possibility to explain what we are seeing in the bones uh, from the archaeological sites. These results help fill in the picture of how agriculture arose in this part of the world. The lead author of the paper is Lucas Barton. The rest of the team was Seth D. Newsom, Fahu Chin, Hua Wang, Thomas P. Gilderson, and Robert L. Bettinger. The results appear in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. This is John Strom for the Carnegie Institution.